Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Christina and I make historical clothing, usually. But today I'm actually going to be taking some modern pants that have belt loops on them and I'm going to remove the belt loops and attach buttons so they can be worn with suspenders for a Victorian look. Now I'm doing this for a guy, but ladies look great in suspenders too. So really this project's for anyone. All right, let's do it. So a couple years ago, I got these amazing pants up at the San Francisco Dickens Fair, and they're obviously Victorian style. They have buttons here for the suspenders. They are Wamaker Frontier clothing. They're great. Um, even this little back cincher thing, and we also bought suspenders there at the same time, same, same brand, Wamaker, and that's great. But I have an event this weekend I got to dress my guy up for, and I wanted gray pants. So <laughs> I've got these ones I found in his closet, and he says I can alter. So the problem is they have belt loops. Um, belt loops were not a thing until the 1920s, and suspenders came in about in the 1820s. So for the Victorian era, um, we want to have suspenders. Uh, attached to buttons here on the pants instead of belt loops. So first thing, let's remove those belt loops. All right, probably not the most exciting thing to watch me do, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use scissors. You can use a seam ripper, nice and sharp with little points, and uh, I'm just going to cut these belt loops off. <laughs> so while I'm doing this, I thought I would mention that kind of a modern solution would be to get suspenders with little clippies on them and that's what a lot of people do um now let's see i think they go like this and you can do that um it's a very modern thing also um you can then wear your pants with suspenders or belt loops there's even you could sew buttons on the inside so they don't show and then the pants can be worn with the suspenders on the inside and or also um, with a belt if you want that same pair of pants to do double duty but that's a very modern thing so we are trying to go for Victorian at least to uh, the casual bypasser so that's why we want things on the outside and it looks like I've got this one off try to get all of that and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the belt loops all right, the belt loops are off and it seemed like there were a lot of them and they were sewed on there really well, but I've got them all off. And so the next order of business is to prepare my buttons. Um, I found these for a pretty good price, pulled them out of my button stash. I recommend everyone have a button stash. Um, <laughs> if you're somewhere and you find great historical looking buttons for cheap, you should buy them um, because having to go out and find the right ones at the time could be expensive and I am a gal on a budget. So I've got my buttons. And then the next thing, I would definitely recommend having your suspenders in hand before before you before you do this. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that you will. I've heard that you can get great suspenders also anywhere they sell nice men's clothing Nordstrom somewhere like that um they're likely to have good ones and I looked into the elastic issue and I kept finding references to about 1820 suspenders or braces came into fashion to hold up high-waisted pants and elastic or rubber was also event invented around that time and there were patents I guess um to have these possibly rubberized or elasticized. Um, I don't know that every common man would have had that, probably more likely to be kind of a woven wool or something, maybe cotton later. Um, but these ones, these ones are elastic and they were sold by reputable companies. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're good. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is there's a question of placement of the buttons. Now I'm lucky because I have this pair uh, already in hand, but basically, um, now there are different kinds of suspenders. These ones I'm supposing are standard for historical and they would button, this is the center back, they would button on either side of that and these are about three inches apart. And then also, uh, so the way it is, there's this kind of 
center part of the pant. There's actually a crease in this one and the first button's gonna go above that. And then the next one about three inches over from that. Now something interesting to note is that suspenders were initially considered underwear. And so why would you have these showing on the outside? Well, men were wearing waistcoats, which covered this. Um, so it was fine that, that the little tabs, the little leather tabs were on the outside here. You wouldn't want them on the inside of the band rubbing on you. Um, but I guess a lot of modern ones, they do wear them on the inside. But our buttons are going to be on the outside. So, all right, let's get to sewing on some buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and get my thread ready. I'm just using some polyester um, thread. I don't think it's important that it need to be natural fibers or anything like that. It's more important just that it be strong and it hold the buttons in place. So I'm going to see here. I'm going to double it and tie a knot in that. And while I'm doing that, just a note about the buttons. Probably about five eighths of an inch wide is good for the buttons. Of course, I have the benefit of looking at the originals that I see here. Um, and then they also have the four, the four buttons here. That's going to help it be a lot more secure. And also keep in mind whatever color your suspenders are, these will kind of show. Um, I'm okay with that, um, with them showing. So let's go ahead and find the places. Let's start with the back because that's easiest. And like I said, about three inches just about from center to center so I'll flip these over find the center there we are and it looks about like three inches and these ones are sewn right in the middle of that waistband so our goal is going to be basically right like that and right like that if you want you could do a little mark with chalk or something if you wanted to. So there we are. Okay, I actually grabbed a pencil <laughs> and just marked them. That's easier. So the way I sew buttons on, I've read a lot of like couture, this is how you sew a button on the right way. Um, maybe other people have read slightly different things than me, but basically I'm gonna do my knot on the outside. I have my doubled thread, a little knot in the end, and I've just gone through right at that spot. This also helps you mark it more easily to get started. And so, right underneath the button. And then you just kind of, let's see, I'm gonna cheat and look real quick at these. It looks like they are sewn kind of in parallel and I want them to look just like that. So I'm gonna put this right on top and go in there. Here, why don't I zoom in? Okay, there we are. All right, so you see I've gone across like that, like a little bar. And then I'm going to do that for the top little bar, like so. And then I'm going to do that a couple more times real quick here. Oh, there's a step I almost forgot. So what you want to do is you don't actually want this to lay completely flat up against the waistband. Um, the, let's see here, we got our little leather piece here. This needs to have room to sit. See that? And kind of a lot of room. Um, I guess you could try to sew it on with that under it if you wanted, um, just to make sure it's going to sit right. But I'm going to do an old seamstress's trick, and I'm going to take like a big needle. I've got this nice big fat little embroidery needle. I'm going to stick it under there. So now when I sew, it will hold it up. It will hold it up for me so I can sew it nice and snug from my perspective but really it's being held off just a little bit just about the right amount okay okay so i've gone back and forth three times each this is my last time and now i'm gonna make a little shank on this button so just poke it back up but don't go through either of the holes pull this out and you're going to wrap this around. I like to do three times. And sometimes I like to tie a little knot here. I'm kind of... <laughs> I like to have lots of knots. I don't want to have to go back and redo things. So I tied a little knot there. And then I'm also going to poke this back through. 
And I'm gonna just ignore anything where I messed up. <laughs> and I'm gonna tie in the back here also. Going, I like to go three times. Okay, just like so. And there you are. So we can see if this is good. There it is. See, it sits nicely, right like that. All right, so those were actually the easy ones to place because they're on the center back, but the more difficult ones to place, and actually what you should do is you should put these on the guy, if you, or if you are the guy, put them on yourself, or if you're making them for yourself and you're a girl, put them on yourself. <laughs> Okay, um, is you would want to have them where they look good on you, where they fit, where they're comfortable. I don't currently have the guy here with me, so I'm just going to copy these because I know they fit in the past. And these look like the waistline is pretty similar. So, right there. So I'm just going to mark, I'm just going to go off of these. They seem fine. So I'm going to mark right there. I'm going to do one and then three inches over, I will do the second one. All right, I won't make you watch that. I'm going to go ahead and get those sewn on. All right, the buttons are on. That was a total of six buttons for the suspenders. And if you wanted, you could even make that one match. And I thought this had a button. Here we go. You can make that one match. Mine were close enough, so I didn't worry about it. Um, but yeah, let's see. So that goes in the back. These go in the front. And something I love about this project is even though I, I mean, I love super historically accurate clothes that have been made from special wool fabric from a pattern based on originals. That's awesome. But I know that's not, um, realistic for a lot of people and I'm all about more the more the merrier right the more people that can come out the better so um if you if you invest in suspenders to start out with that's going to be a lot um smaller amount of money to invest than having to buy your own pair of pants and so you could get yourself some suspenders first then and alter pants this way and start with that and then later if you want super awesome historically accurate pants, you know, with the cool little, ah, cool little cinch back. Some of, the, some of them even have this like really high waist in the back. You know, you can get those at a future date. You can gradually build up your wardrobe, but, um, so yeah, you can, you can start out, you can start out like this, doing this to a pair of pants. So there we are. We're done. I hope these fit the guy I did this for. Um, I think they will because these pants fit him and the suspenders fit on the other pants. So we should be good. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me and uh, go give it a try and let me know if it works. All right. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Goodbye.